Okay, our next topic is fuel type, oil type, and mix ratio. And this is a this is a very uh, tricky um, subject because I, I don't want to hurt anybody's feeling. This is not my intention. Um, so first of all, my recommendation for fuel: always try to use high octane premium fuel for your engines. Uh, it's, it's a universal rule that, uh, you know, the higher the octane, the, the, the better the fuel, the cooler your engine is going to run, the cleanest, it, it cleanest is going to burn. So, you know, that really applies to, to our small engines too. Uh, in terms of oil, you know, when you buy a new engine, follow the manufacturer's spec as to, you know, what do you need to use for braking and then for regular use. Um, then, what oil to use? My recommendation is use high quality synthetic oil. Um, if you use a, a, a cheap oil, you're going to end up paying the price later on down the road, um, you know, with carbon buildup and breakdowns and things like that. Here at our club, there's a lot of us that only fly um, gas planes uh, like myself and uh, we have all come to the conclusion that the best oil that has worked for us is the steel ultra and uh, I have a little bottle here to show you this guy here is uh, is the one that is giving us the best results and why is that we find that it has um, equal lubrication properties as some of the higher higher end names like Bell Ray H1R which is this guy here okay this is excellent oil maybe one of the best oils money can buy I am still using Bell Ray whenever I run out of what I have I'm gonna switch over to uh, to the still ultra and this is why We've been comparing the carbon buildup on our engines and the reality is that with the Bell Ray, I for example have a lot of carbon buildup. But if I get my, my finger inside the, my, my um, muffler, that comes out completely black. The guys that are using uh, Steel Ultra, we do the same, same test and it's completely different. We think it's one of the cleanest oils uh, you know it's gonna give you one of the cleanest results in terms of how clean is gonna keep your your engine that being said you know there are plenty of great oils I'm not saying that Bell Ray is not good it's an excellent oil uh, you know you have red line and, and whatnot so there are plenty of good oils out there we here uh, really believe that uh, steel ultra may be one of the best because of the clean properties it has now let's talk about mixture rate and I'm gonna to try to put a link to a calculator that an online calculator that I use for uh, you know to calculate the rate that you're using so a lot of people get confused with the 40 to 1, 50 to 1, 100 to 1 and I'm gonna to try to quickly explain that to you okay guys I have relocated because the Sun was really killing me so I'm in the shade now I feel a little bit cooler so talking about uh, fuel mixture fuel rate mixture a lot of people get the numbers confused and I just want to go over that real quick I hope you can see that here in this notebook um, let's say 40 to 1 which is one of the most widely used uh, fuel mixtures so we have 40 the two dots like this to 1 believe it or not a lot of people get those numbers confused and uh, what we have here is this is 40 parts of fuel to one part of oil and this is always better to see it backwards one part of oil to 40 parts of fuel same way when you have let's say uh, 50 to 1 it's the same thing is you're using one part of oil to 50 parts of fuel and that is the uh, rule of thumb there I am going to put uh, the link of an uh, online calculator so that you guys can get accurate um, mixtures. For example here 50 to 1 is a leaner mixture than 40 to 1. The higher this number here means that you're putting 
more fuel into the one part of oil okay so it's not the same as putting one part one part of oil with 40 parts of fuel at its example a hundred parts of fuel to one part of oil this is really leaner okay in terms of oil there's less oil in 101 than in a 40 to 1 one part of oil for a hundred parts of fuel okay my friends um, the next topic we're gonna be talking about is troubleshooting and this is in reality a very broad subject I am not gonna have all, all the answers because I haven't gone through all the problems myself so I'm gonna talk about uh, from the problems that I've had and I've seen some of my friends had and actually I think it'll be very beneficial if we always leave comments and videos like this and tell others the problems that we've had and how have we fixed them because that way we all help each other and we help each other save money so actually that's the reason behind this this video is trying to help others save some money by by telling you the problems that I and my friends have gone through okay troubleshooting one of the uh, first things that, that affect any gas engine is tuning so make sure that you have dialed that engine to its optimal uh, tuning uh, uh, um, if you don't know how to do it try to find someone who does so that they can do it for you um, it is I can stress how much pain how much headaches you'll save by taking the right amount of time in tuning an engine properly okay oftentimes you can have an engine that is struggling uh, burping or is struggling with acceleration or different things like that and the primary primarily reason for that may be tuning now there are other things okay um, actually tuning if you're running too lean your engine is gonna run out of power once it gets too hot is gonna run out of power one little hint that I'm gonna give you when you run an engine either on the ground or on the air when you bring it down use your finger okay the this part of your finger here and touch the crankcase right behind the um, the propeller it should be hot but not as hot that you go like you should be able to touch it if your engine is properly tuned it doesn't matter how hot the weather is how long do you run that engine for up there when it comes down you should be able to touch the crankcase and be hot to the touch but not so hot to burn you if it burns you right away you're running too lean so uh, do use little hints like that to determine if, if you're running too hot or not too lean too rich and and if you don't know how to do it find someone that that helps you with it I'm gonna try to put a link that'll help you with that now you know type of fuel type of oil type of rate all of that goes into the mix however for example I've had problems myself of an engine burping at high high speed go full throttle and the engine started burping boop boop intermittent it was like intermittent it intermittently stopping and going stopping and going stopping and going on that particular time I did not time I did not take the proper time to debug the problem and I went ahead and bought a new uh, ignition guess what the ignition was not the problem I hooked up a new ignition the problem stayed the same okay my second thing was the second thing I tried was a new spark plug I put a new spark plug problem gone so I'm gonna try to teach you how to debug certain problems so that you don't do like me and go spend sixty seventy dollars on a uh, on a part like an ignition and then turns out that was not the problem okay I always keep an old but good working spark plug in in my uh, 
tools that I use to debug if I have a good or, or a good ignition or not. Um, and actually, that'll tell me if there's a spark or, or not, but it's not going to tell me if the problem is the ignition or the pickup, the hall sensor. So you see how there are so many little parts that we need to test. So uh, an old spark plug is always good. You can put it in, in the, in, you know, let me show you. So you'll put the spark plug in here, connect it there, and then you turn that uh, propeller with the ignition on, obviously, and you should see a spark. Never, ever, ever run your propeller or your engine with the ignition on without a spark plug connected here because you will ruin your ignition okay big chances so don't ever do that always put a spark plug see if there is a spark now I keep an old spark plug and one of the problems that you face when you put a spark plug in here and then you want to take it out it's very difficult that's why I use a, an old spark plug because I use I can use a, a set of pliers and pull it out even if I'm you know damaging the threads it doesn't matter it's an old spark plug that I will never use back in one of my engines and I mark it and put it separately so that I never make the confusion or try to put it in the engine because it's it, you know the threads are all ruined in that spark plug so that's one of the things you can do now let's say you think you don't have a spark so let's get into the meat of the matter with certain little tools that you can buy to make your life easier Okay, the first thing I want to show you is a little device that you can buy to test your ignition. Let me show it to you. I hope you can see it. Okay, that little device. So this little device is color coded. You're going to check it says black. You're going to connect it to the cable that goes uh, for the hall sensor. Okay, then you're going to take a battery. This battery that I'm using is almost out of power. So uh, the tool is going to... It's going to give me, um, you see how it sounds? And let me show you to see if you see that light. You see a green light? Okay. That's telling me this ignition is good. So this is one little device that you can buy to test your ignition. Okay, we just tested our ignition and now we know we have a good ignition. Now the next thing that we need to test is the pickup or the hall sensor. So we have, I have a sensor here, let me show it to you, okay? And I have this other little device, this device that is going to help me debug and let me know if I have a good sensor. So this one is self-powered, so it has two batteries. If you can see here, it has, it has two batteries in there, okay? So what, what we want to do here is connect our sensor to this device, okay? And it, you notice that it has two different cables. It's for different type of uh, connections. So some engines have, you know, from engine to engine, you can have different connections. So now, I have a hub, an engine hub. This is the same part that you have in, on your engine where you put, you connect your propeller and spinner to, okay? So if you notice, this part has this dot here. I hope you can see that. That dot is our magnet. That is what really uh, uh, engages our, you know, our all our electrical connection in to shoot that spark, okay? So what I, I want to do is show you. I hope you can see this. So I have my little device here that is going to help me determine if I have a, a good uh, a good sensor. So let's say I, I'm running this like it's, like if it's the engine. I'm going to run it here. You see how it beeps and it even has a light. I hope you guys can see that. Okay, now I know I have a good sensor. So we just debug two of the main things that we can 
think we may have a problem with, which is the, <clears throat> the ignition box and the sensor that picks the signal, and we know that those are good. So we can move into something different. Another thing that you want to look at is the timing on your engine. If you bought a new engine and you have never touched the timing, chances are you don't have any problems with it. But, it's very rare, but chances are with the vibration, the uh, pickup sensor might have moved. Again, it's very rare, I've never seen it happen, but it's always a possibility. So, you can use a dial like this to put your engine back in time or double check if your engine is in good time and um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get in details on how to use this but I just wanted to show it to you okay this is something that you can get and uh, the three items that I have just shown you the the device to to test your ignition the device to take your pickup or your hulls and uh, hulls uh, sensor and these I believe you can get from um, RC extreme I'm going to try to find the link and leave it in the description of the uh, video also. Now, let's say you have a problem, you have already debugged your electrical components and you have a spark, everything's good. Now you need to be thinking about gas. If there's a problem with the fuel delivery or anything like that. So, you really need to start looking all the way from inside the tank. The clunk, is it still there? Is it attached? Is it not attached? Did it fell off? Did it break? Um, debris? You know, do you have filters in your in, in your lines? Are you using a filter in, in your fuel tank that you use to fill in your, your, your engine tank? Okay? So all of those little things matter, okay? Are all of those lines good? Nothing broken. If a line from the um, from the tank to the carburetor is broken is gonna suck in air It's gonna make your engine revolutions go way higher so you're gonna have a very fast idle all of a sudden okay so it happens it has happened to me that I've had something eat by rubbing into one of my fuel tubings and all of a sudden I have a tiny little you know hole in there and it's sucking in air and my revolutions my are going high 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 out of the blue so that's another thing to, to consider, okay?